As part of the perinatal optimization care pathway, we think about things prior to delivery, at the time of delivery, and just immediately after delivery. And in this presentation, I'll be focusing on optimal cord management, which is an evidence-based strategy um, to reduce um, perinatal mortality. We know that optimal cord management reduces death in preterm babies by up to a third. So this is a staggering statistic and it really is impetus for us all to be trying to implement this practice. We know the number needed to treat is 30 to 50 in order to reduce mortality in one baby and as low as 20 in babies under 28 weeks gestation. So our most vulnerable population um, is where we achieve the greatest benefit. We know that there are other benefits to optimal cord management um, because it improves blood pressure and reduces the need for inotropes, which can have long-term consequences on neurodevelopment of preterm babies. We also know that it improves haemoglobin and results in a reduced need for blood transfusion. The evidence behind it, um, so as we've said, it does reduce mortality by at least 27% and has the highest impact in the most extreme preterm. We talked about the cardiovascular benefits and these are evidence-based um, improvements and also the reduction in need for blood transfusion is an evidence-based intervention and it is also endorsed by WHO, the International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation, NICE, BAPM and other international guidelines. The drivers for it, so uh, all of these organisations have promoted the use of optimal cord management, so we know that it is a very strong evidence-based intervention. In terms of trying to implement it in our unit, um, it really is a quality improvement journey. So we are at stage one to two of our journey at the minute where we're trying to define the problem, um, identify a team of enthusiasts and then formulate and plan for possible solutions. We've reviewed our practice this year in 2022 and we've looked at the percentage of admissions under 34 weeks who have received optimal cord management. And you can see clearly here that there's quite a large variation in those babies receiving optimal cord management. Uh, we currently are sitting at a median of 53%, but we would really target closer to 80% um, for our first wave of improvement and then would be closer to over 90% for our second wave of improvement. So there are clear steps of improvement that we need to try and target. And this is just the raw data. So you can see that there's just random variation and there's no evidence of sustained improvement in optimal cord management. Uh, whenever we looked at the data further and used a Pareto chart to try and define where we were uh, falling down for optimal cord management, um, so the main problem really is that it is not recorded on BadgerNet in up to 20% of babies. So this is a problem that could be easily rectified with just education and I'll show you on the fight off few slides where exactly it should be recorded on BadgerNet and that's really important especially for our medical staff to complete that on admission of the baby. Other reasons are if the baby is in poor condition at birth but the evidence shows that even if the baby is in poor condition, over 90% of babies will breathe um, during the, that one minute of delayed cord clamping and still benefit from all of the transfusion that occurs during that period. So our aim really is to provide optimal cord management in all babies under 34 weeks gestation. And this is a driver diagram that we have produced to try to implement optimal cord management in our unit. Some of the change ideas which we're currently implementing is simulation training for neonatal and maternity staff, um, trying to focus on optimal cord management uh, through safety briefs and then trying to celebrate any successes that we have. So we have assembled a team and we'd be more than happy if anybody would like to come along please contact me if you would like to get involved in this project. We need maternity and neonatal staff, uh, staff and delivery suite and theatres are all going to be affected by this. Um, we expect the team to have clearly defined roles when optimal cord management is ongoing. 
And we want to align with our thermoregulation colleagues and also with the antenatal council. And we need to highlight this to parents so that they're aware of what is happening during that 60 seconds after their baby has just been born. So in terms of the evidence behind it, so BAPM has got an excellent toolkit for optimal cord management. And there are very few contraindications to it. Um, they have reported that need for maternal resuscitation in face of massive hemorrhage or if there is a ruptured vasa previa, snapped cord or trauma to the cord would be the only major contraindications to optimal cord management. There are special circumstances which BAPM have outlined such as complete placental abruption and even in that case they've advised that the placenta should be held above the baby for 60 seconds and cord milking can be used in babies over 28 weeks gestation um, just two to three milkings of the cord, and that has been shown in meta-analysis to uh, improve mortality. Um, if there is short cord length, this shouldn't be a contraindication. It can be overcome with optimal positioning of the baby. Um, twin deliveries should not be a contraindication um, if the team is adequately prepared and the um, positions in the room are set out, we should be able to achieve optimal cord management for all babies. And if there is prolonged stabilisation during fetal to neonatal transition, so if you find during optimal cord management that the baby isn't responding, um, there are no signs of life um, for up to 30 seconds after, um, after the baby is delivered, then this may be an indication to cut the cord early and transfer the baby to the resuscitator. So there are really four key strategies that we need in order to implement optimal cord management. So human factors are a huge part of this project. So it's a change in culture, a change in mindset. This is a different teaching to what we were used to. So we need to try and get everybody on board um, with this new way of thinking because it does really impact on our babies. Promoting normothermia. So we can align with our um, colleagues who are implementing normal therapy as part of the periprime package but all the evidence shows that babies who have received optimal cord management in other units um, are not uh, hypothermic or hyperthermic in fact there are more babies who are normal thermic who have received this intervention um, supporting transition so during that 60 seconds there are things that we can do active things which will reassure the team that we are still looking after the baby so we can apply the plastic bag if they're um, under 32 weeks gestation. We can do airway positioning maneuvers, we can do gentle stimulation of the baby and all of those things if done correctly will help to support the baby to breathe and transition correctly during that 60 seconds. And finally getting parents on board so this is where antenatal counselling comes in and we have got new antenatal counselling leaflets um, which does mention uh, optimal cord management so if parents know that for that 60 seconds we are allowing transition uh, and we are allowing blood to flow from the placenta to the baby um, the vast majority of parents are very much in support of this because they know it will provide a better outcome for their baby um, and we know that we are still looking after the baby at that time um, and providing uh, all of those interventions we talked about. So this is an example of a unit which has used a step card, a safety step card, to try and implement optimal cord management. And after discussion with our team, this may be something we need to implement if we're finding that there are problems, um, particularly with where we position ourselves, um, where the equipment is going to be in the room. And this will be uh, also demonstrated in our video simulations, which will be coming soon. Um, uh, also focusing on normal thermia. So if we have our team for resuscitation, um, we will need to assign somebody to the role of promoting normal thermia in the baby. We need to be looking at the environment, avoiding any unnecessary drafts, warm towels, sterile bag, hat on, making sure the heater is working and on and not turning itself off, and temperature checks and delivery suite. But I would refer you to the normal thermia um, presentation for further information on this. Support and transition. So we've talked a bit about this. We're during those 60 seconds where we're not uh, not doing anything during that 60 seconds. We're doing quite a lot of things. 
And if they are all done methodically during that time, it should take up the 60 seconds. So applying your um, your bag, applying a hat if it's a non-sterile environment, um, supporting the airway, um, gentle stimulation. And for that, um, we have started to implement that a paediatric member of the team should be scrubbed in if the baby is in theatre to allow that 60 seconds to occur. Um, we should also assign a member of the team to start the clock um, so that there is a clear time frame and there's clear communication between the neonatal and obstetric staff of when to cut the cord. And the statistics show that over 90% of babies will breathe with or without stimulation during this period. Um, getting parents involved is so important. Um, this is just a snapshot of our antenatal counselling leaflet and you can see there on the bottom right um, we do talk about um, delayed cord clamping or optimal cord management following delivery of their baby. And any parents who have, I've been involved with have been more than happy for their baby to have this intervention. From the BAPM toolkit, um, this is a lovely excerpt from uh, one parent whose baby received delayed cord clamping. And she highlighted that as it was very well explained um, to her prior to her baby's delivery, she knew what was happening. She wasn't worried during that time and she knew that it would help um, with saving her baby's life. So it was a very positive experience for this mother. Um, this is more aimed at the medical staff when the baby is admitted to the neonatal unit when we fill out our admission note. We need to make sure that we are documenting whether the baby has had optimal cord management or not. And I would refer to you to the admission section of the Badgernet admission, uh, neonatal admission details. Under the section of labour and births, there is a section on was cord clamping immediate, yes or no, and the amount of time from birth to cord clamping should be recorded. This is really vital for our uh, audit data and for our unit's performance. So if this is not recorded, it means that it hasn't been done for those babies. So it really is vital that we record this accurately during the baby's admission to the neonatal unit. So really we want to move on from here. If uh, anyone would like to get involved with the project, please um, get in touch with myself or Sarah and you will see further information coming through our simulation training and we will be able to promote this um, intervention as we move forward with an aim to reduce um, mortality in our most vulnerable babies. Thank you for listening.